Hey guys, Jared here, and today we're going to be working on how to make your own little custom loading animation, kind of like Snapchat, how they have the little, like, guy that dances, you know. We're going to be doing something a little bit simpler, we're not going to make it so the guy dances, we're just making it so some text loads up as our own custom thing, and then we're also going to be colorizing that in view as well. But if you want to add your own animation, just look into how to animate images, and then you can apply this to your project. So anyway, without any further ado, let's get started. Now the way we do this is by opening up Xcode, create a new Xcode project, and this will be a single view application. So go ahead, click next, our product name, you can call this really whatever you want, but I shall call this my table view anim or something like that. Language, Swift, devices, universal, go ahead, click next, create, and we are good to go. Now the way we do this is by going over here to our main.storyboard and what we're gonna do is just go ahead, delete that view controller and I'm just going to add in a table view controller. As for demonstration purposes, this, is, this just makes things a lot easier. So now let's go ahead and click on this table view controller right now. We're gonna go ahead, go over here to our attributes inspector and say is initial view controller. And then that's just making it so that's the first view that loads up, it's the initial view controller. And then now we can go ahead and apply this to uh, our view controller.swift file that we have right here so that we can edit and add things onto that table view. So we just need to go over here to our viewcontroller.swift and I'm just going to go ahead change the class name of this to my table view controller with the super class of a UI table view uh, controller like so. And now that we have that set up, let's go back over here to our main.storyboard, click on this table view that you just created, and head over here to your identity inspector. Now with this, we have the class. So this class, we're just going to apply that to our table view controller, or the name that you put right here inside of here. So now we can add some elements onto this table view controller, including our refresh control, as well as some things that go inside of each of the cells. But first off, let's go ahead and populate these cells though so that we can actually play around with this refresh control. And again, we have that super class of the UI table view controller. And what this contains is actually a lot of elements and functions that you need to add and do some things to your table view. So let's go ahead and populate our table view by saying table view. This will be our number of rows in section, like so. And just go ahead and delete any excessive text, if any pops up for you, it did for me. But either way, we have this function right here. How many rows in this section do we want? I'm just gonna make this really quick and simple. We're not loading images in there or anything. We're just making it so it loads some text. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say var my text array will be equal to, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say open bracket, close bracket, and this will be a string value and then just open close parentheses like so. And now we wanna add some elements into this text array. So we can go ahead and say my text array will be equal to open bracket, close bracket, and you can just go ahead and put in any text you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in there. It really doesn't matter what's inside of this text array. It just, it's gonna be your own table view. So whatever you're building your own table view with, this is what you're gonna be using. So now we can go ahead and say table view number of rows in section, and we're going to return the value of my text array dot count like so. And then now down here, we want to add these uh, texts onto the each of the cells. So we wanna go ahead, type in table view, and you want this one that says table view, cell for row index path. So just go ahead, plug that in there, and let's go ahead and create a cell. So I'm gonna say let my cell, and I'm just gonna set this equal to my table view dot DQ reusable cell with identifier there. And with this identifier, this is referencing a prototype cell inside of your main.storyboard. So if you go in here into your main.storyboard, click on the first cell that you have right up here, head over to your attributes inspector, go over here to your identifier, and this is what it's referencing. So as long as you have, so it's grabbing this uh, cell right here, and it's adding that element onto that cell. So I'm just putting the identifier of lowercase cell. And that is how I'm going to have it over here in my table view DQ reusable cell with identifier. So again, this is my lowercase cell. And then let's just hop down here and I'm just gonna go ahead and say return my cell, like so. And then now let's go ahead and say my cell.textlabel.text will be equal to, and this will be equal to my text array open bracket, close bracket, and we're just gonna put this in here as my index path dot row. So essentially what this is doing right here is, for each of these cells that's being created, we have an index path according to 
that cell. So this index path dot row is which row are you building that for? So we have this cell dot text label dot text. Text label is something that's automatically built into each of the cells. So once you actually call text label, it's going to add that right in there. So we can go ahead and say cell dot text label dot text will be equal to and then this will be text array, and then this is for the index path dot row. So if it, the row is zero, meaning the first row, that is gonna be you, and then that, and then that. And there you go. And then lastly, it just wants this exclamation point to be added there. And if we were to build and run this right now, we have it so the table view is being populated with the text that I added in there. Now, of course, the next step in this is let's add some refresh control. That's what you guys came to see. So let's go ahead and let's add some refresh control. So first off, let's go ahead and add a refresh control onto this table view that we just created. And it's dead simple. So the way we do this is by going over here and we're just gonna go ahead and say self.tableview.add sub view. And we are going to add the sub view of our refresh control. This is actually something that's automatically built in there. All you need to do is add an exclamation point at the end of that refresh control. Now, if you wanna create your own refresh control, uh, you can actually edit this one that's automatically built in here by saying refresh control dot uh, like tint color or something like that. You can, let's go ahead and say refresh control dot tint color will be equal to a UI color dot green color. And that should make it so that refresh control is actually a green color. Now you can edit this thing to your heart's content. Now if you want to create your own refresh control, you can go ahead, go up here to your variables. You can say var my refresh will be equal to, and I'm just going to set this equal to a UI refresh control like so, and you would just add this refresh as your sub view down here. Now, like I said, there's an automatically built in one and there's this one that you can create. I think it's better to go the route of one that you actually create yourself. You might disagree with me. I don't really know which one's better. I don't think there's that much of a difference if you go either way. So just take my word with a grain of salt. You can do either way, I think. And now we have that, so I actually have this refresh control dot tint color. I'm just gonna go ahead and set that equal to my refresh dot tint color now, because I'm gonna be working with this variable that I created up here now. And now let's go ahead, build and run this, and let's check out what we have. So now if I were to take this and I scroll down, you can see that there is my loading animation and it has the tint color of green. Now the way you dismiss this refresh control is very simple, but you have to keep in mind that when do you want this refresh to control to go away? Do you want this to happen when I click on a button? That's what we're gonna be using in this sense, just because we want this to be quick and simple. But if you are loading data from the internet, then you wanna have that go away upon completion of downloading all the resources from the internet. So just keep that in mind. Today we're just gonna be working with when I click on one of these cells, it's gonna go away. So I'm gonna go ahead, go down here, create a new function, and this is my table view, did select row and index path. And we could just go ahead and say my refresh dot end refreshing. It's very simple just to end it. So if we were to build and run this, uh, let's check out what we've done. And here you have it, so I'm gonna refresh, and now when I click on one of these cells, it goes away like that. So again, this is up to you when you want that to end refreshing, but just keep that in mind, that's how you end the refreshing. So let's go ahead and add a custom refresh control. So the way you add your own refresh control is we need to go ahead, go up here to File, New, File, and we're going to add a view. So this is going to underneath the iOS user interface and view. So this is a .nib file. And this is what we're gonna be using instead of just that normal refresh control that's automatically built in from Apple. So let's go ahead, click next, and let's just create this as my refresh view, like so. And now we can go ahead, create that. And this is my refresh view. Now the way I want this to be planned out is I want there to be just a label in there. Now. Keep this in mind, this is how I'm doing it just for the sake of tutorial reasons. But if you want there to be an image and you want that image to be animating as long as it's refreshing, you would add a UI image view in there. And then you'd be able to reference this later and we'll do that in just a minute, but we're gonna be able to reference that later and animate it. But either way, let's go ahead and I'm gonna delete that image view. And again, for tutorial reasons, I'm just gonna put this as my label. So I'm gonna go ahead, add that label, center it onto my scene like so. I'm going to right click or control click and drag from this label over to my view. And we're gonna go ahead and say center horizontally, center vertically. And I'm just gonna set the heights and widths equal to 
what I have my view around. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag that label out there so that it's just perfectly centered within the scene. And then now also with this label, as you can see, uh, the label is over on here on the left. I don't want that, so I'm going to go ahead and center the text over here in my attributes inspector. And as for the text that I want to be shown, I'm just going to go ahead and set that equal to refreshing like so. So now it's going to be refreshing. And you can also change the label text if you want. We're not working with super on the aesthetics part of this, just on the how this would be done. So we can go ahead and there we have it. So this is the view that I want to be loaded as my refresh view instead of that circle. So now let's go ahead, go over here to my view controller swift and we're going to go ahead and add that. So the way we do this is I'm going to go ahead, create a new function and this will be my load refresh uh, control, like so, open close parentheses, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and inside of here, this is where I'm going to be loading my refresh control that I just created. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let my refresh contents equal, and this will be my ns bundle dot main bundle dot load nib uh, named, like so, and with this load nib named, of course, that's a fun thing to say. So with this load nib named, we're going to go ahead and set that equal to the name right here, which is my refresh view dot nib. So it's going to be that name right there. So we go ahead, take that name, lowercase refresh, and then we're going to go ahead, capital V view. And then owner, we're going to set this equal to self and options, we're setting this equal to nil. We don't want anything with the options or anything like that. And then now with these refresh contents that I'm doing, let's go ahead and let's grab the view out of that nib that I just grabbed. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and say my var custom view will be equal to, and I'm gonna set this equal to my refresh uh, contents, open bracket, close bracket, zero. And then this is going to be as a UI view. So essentially we're just grabbing the first view inside of my refresh view dot nib. So if you have multiple views, don't do that. Just go ahead and put that one view in there and that's what you're going to be using as your custom refresh. So let's go over here to my view controller dot swift and now with this custom view we want to set the size of this equal to our refresh view. So we can go ahead and say my custom view dot frame will be equal to and this will be equal to my free refresh dot bounds. So we're just taking the size of my refresh UI refresh control right here and we're setting that equal to our custom view dot frame. And then now we can also say my custom view dot and you can set your background color equal to whatever you want. I'm going to set this equal to my UI color dot clear color for now, but we're going to actually animate the background so it's more like Snapchat in just a minute, but let's go ahead continue on. There you have it. So that's my custom view that I want to add on to that refresh control. So we can go ahead and take that and I'm going to say self dot refresh dot add sub view and we are going to add the sub view of my custom view and then now we want to go ahead and call this function right here so let's go ahead and right above this self dot table view dot add sub view we want to load that refresh control inside of that refresh view that we have right up here uh, before we actually add it on into the sub view so it makes sense to call this right beforehand so we're going to go ahead and say load refresh control so now that's going to call that function that we just created now let's go ahead build and run this and let's see where we're at now as you can see when we pull down on this we're still getting that green circle in the background so let's go ahead and fix that so the way we do this is by going over here and we're going to go ahead and say our refresh dot tint color and we're setting this equal to dot clear color and now let's go ahead check this out and here we have it so now I'm gonna go ahead take that put it down there and we're just getting that custom refresh now one thing I'm noticing right now is as we scroll down from this table view like the refreshing just pops up right in front of that and that's actually a problem especially if you have a background color now we're still getting some errors but first let's go ahead and grab our label so let's go ahead and say var and this will be my custom label just because we're Go in by the custom view or custom label. I'm just going to go ahead and say my var custom label. And what we want to do with this custom label is we're going to set this equal to a UI label, but we want to grab this from our custom view. So let's go back over here to my refresh view dot nib. And what we want to do in here is I have my refreshing label right here, and I want to go ahead and set a tag of one to that so that we can reference it later. So we can go back over here to my view controller dot swift. I'm going to say my var custom label will be equal to my custom view dot, and then this will be my view with tag. This will be one. That is the tag that we're referencing, and right now it's going to give me an error because it doesn't really know that this custom label that we're referencing is actually a UI label. So we're going to go ahead and say my custom view dot view with tag one, and then we're going to set this as a UI label. 
and we're good to go there. And now that we have that done, we can actually edit our custom label.txt. So if you have images, this is also where you would be animating the images. You just want to set a tag to your image view, and you want to reference that image view and switch between images accordingly. So yeah, there, there you go. Just keep that in mind. So now we want to go ahead and say my custom label dot, and I'm going to set this equal to my text color will be equal to a UI color dot red color. You can set that to whatever you want. And I'm also going to go ahead and set my custom view dot uh, background color will be equal to a UI color dot blue color or something like that. And now let's go ahead, build and run this. And let's check out what we have so far. Again, we're referencing stuff from our refresh view dot nib and we're applying that inside of our table view as our refresh control. So let's go ahead and check out what we have so far. And now we're still getting this error where I scroll down and as you can see, like the the thing just pops up as refreshing, but it's like not a it's not a nice loading end of it. So let's go ahead and fix that by going over here to our project. And what I want to do is up here inside of my refresh, I want to make sure that the tint color and the background color. So I'm going to say refresh dot background color will be equal to a UI color uh, dot clear color. That way, uh, it's we're not going to get that weird error going on anymore, and we should have it so that the refresh is just working properly. And as you can see, that did the trick. So once I actually set that uh, refresh dot background color and the tint color equal to a clear color, that adds that right in there as my refreshing. And you get that cool little like stretching animation in there as well. Now, if you want to add some animations in this, you can go ahead and do that by going over here. And what I'm going to do is just animate the background of this. So I'm going to go ahead and say UI view dot animate with duration and then we want this one right here that says anime with duration, delay, and options right here. So this one is actually pretty cool. So let's go ahead, duration, I'm gonna set this equal to 0 0.5. Delay, I'm setting that equal to zero. We want it to happen immediately. And then open bracket, close bracket for the options. And what we wanna do in here, and we wanna have the option to dot, and then this will be auto reverse and then comma, and then this is dot. And this one is going to be, you can put this as whatever you want. You can say curve ease in or curve linear. I think a curve linear is good for this instance. You can do whatever you want, of course. Now with the animations here, just say open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and this is where you're gonna be adding your animations. And then for the completion here, go ahead and put in nil. We don't want anything to happen upon completion, although you might. Now let's go ahead and continue on. And what do I want to do inside of this? Well, I'm gonna change the background color. So I'm gonna say my custom view dot background color will be equal to, and I want my first color to be a UI color dot Let's put it as a red color, like so. And then I want the other color that I want to be switching back and forth between. That is what the auto reverse does. What it does, is it takes these two colors that you have right here. So you have this color and this color and it auto reverses it. So you get a nice smooth animation going on between them. Now let's go ahead and let's continue on. So we want custom view dot, and then this will be my background color. And then this will be equal to my UI color dot and this will be my blue color. That's what I want to switch between, so I'm choosing it. And then now let's go ahead and another thing I want to add up here inside of my options, I'm going to put a comma, dot, and then we're going to put in repeat. We want this to repeat over and over again until it dismisses that view. So let's go ahead and let's build and run this and let's see where we're at. And there you have it, so now I'm going to go ahead, scroll down, and now you get that little trippy animation going on with refreshing in the middle. Now that refreshing is absolutely terrible having that as a red color. So I'm just going to change that real quick just for my sake. I'm going to set that equal to a white color. Now let's go ahead, build and run this. And there you have it. So now it's refreshing and you get those cool colors going in there. And there you have it. That's how you add your own custom loading animation for your inside of your table view with Swift and Xcode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more work tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Sorry for the lack of uploads lately. I'm working on my own project at the moment, and I'm just putting a lot more time towards that because I want to show you guys what it is. I'm really excited about it and I can't wait to show you guys. Also, if you want to make like short tutorial recommendations like anything you're just wanting to know, like what is a certain statement all about, be sure to leave that down in the comment section down below as I just don't have much time lately. So I'm looking into doing like working with frameworks a little bit more because those type of tutorials just don't take as much time to make. But either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you in the next one. Bye.